Hi there, I'm Alex and welcome back to Ukes of Alex, the ukulele channel where we dive headfirst into ukulele and ukulele culture and just try and have some fun along the way. And you've seen the thumbnail, you know what you've clicked on. The ukulele we're going to talk about today is the definition of fun. I think it brings the fun back to the ukulele in a way that sometimes, for me personally as a player, it gets lost. Um, we're going to look at the Flight Pioneer. And we're going to talk about solid body electric ukuleles and discuss really where they sit in the wider ukulele world. Okay, so the Flight Rock series consists of four different models. There's a few different finishes for some of them as well. And uh, they're all based on iconic electric guitars, which makes sense because somebody may come along and, and invent the perfect ukulele solid body electric. But I guess you want to feel familiar and you want to bring some kind of history and lineage to the electric ukulele thing itself, even though it's a relatively small um, a small subgenre of the ukulele and uh, I've picked the Pioneer to talk about because of all of them it's the one that I could restring and set up left-handed without it looking really strange um, because ultimately I've I've been talking about these for years but I find them one of the hardest ukuleles to really get to grips with and play I play electric guitar it's probably my main instrument uh, away from the ukulele and I play electric guitar in a function band regularly working and have been for years so picking this up should be quite simple but playing it upside down it just requires a level of accuracy that I just I don't have so setting this up left-handed has given me an even playing field and uh, I know for a fact that Flight are planning to introduce a left-handed model towards the end of 2022 so I wanted to jump the gun and talk about this now and if I like it then I'll pick up the Pathfinder down the road. Um, the Pioneer is probably the least popular of the four designs that Flight do. They do the Pathfinder which is an S style, they do a Centurion which is an LP style and then they do the Vanguard which um, is named on, after a company which is all letters. It's the PRS style, but you, you don't really want to say that probably for legal reasons. I, I actually don't know, but flights are very clever. They're not the first to the market with this kind of thing. There's been um, a fantastic custom shop builder called Fana building these for a while, and there's been Risa, who have been building a Les Paul style ukulele probably since about 2014, maybe even earlier. And um, what flights have done is bring a quality model and I, I really do believe it's a quality model to the wider audience of the ukulele because the Risa is about £500-ish, now around 550 maybe even creeping up to £600. It's made in the EU. Um, it's a very refined machine. Um, and the flights are, I'm not going to lie, they're a bit scruffier than the Risa. They're not quite as refined, but they are half the price. So you'll more likely find people picking these up and playing them. And as somebody that's had lots and lots of fun over the years on Squire guitars or Epiphone guitars, there's absolutely no prob like, there's just there's no harm in purchasing something that cosmetically is a tiny bit rough around the edges, but gives you the full experience of the instrument itself. So it sounds like I'm defending flight here, and I kind of am, because the Reese's were always something that we sold at SUS, but the introduction of the particularly the flight pathfinder which has the really lovely quilted uh, maple and flame blue finish it just inspired a whole new generation of players to pick these up including myself i never felt the need to buy one of these until flight made them cool <laughs> so uh yeah what is the pioneer 
Well, it's, it's a solid mahogany body. It's a very heavy ukulele. I think if you're used to an acoustic ukulele, this is going to shock you. Um, it weighs a similar amount to one of my lighter electric guitars. It has two humbucker pickups. If you're wondering what the difference between humbuckers and normal ukulele pickups are, a normal ukulele pickup would be an under saddle piezo, which is a strip that would sit under the bridge on an acoustic instrument. That picks up the vibration when you play and translates that across to an amplifier. A humbucker works very differently. A humbucker works off of the magnetic uh, reaction happening between the metal strings and the pickup. So what you're getting is largely a magnetic transient response rather than the vibration. So the tone wood plays less of a role in the sound, but the overall weight and type of wood definitely has an effect because that affects how those steel strings vibrate. So a very light instrument will resonate very different to a, to a heavier instrument. And that's why the um, Pathfinder sounds dramatically different plugged into the Pioneer. You have uh, basically this double horn SG design based on the Gibson, um, the Gibson SG, which in itself was a kind of follow on from the Les Paul. You have a through neck, so the neck, it's a set neck, but it goes all the way through without um, a kind of noticeable heel cap. You have this really lovely standard uh, classic electric guitar headstock with the flight logo. And then you have what I would say is probably one of the things that lets it down, a very, very basic uh, closed gear tuner. They stay in tune absolutely fine, but if you were somebody who was performing with this regularly, I'd be pretty confident that you would probably get a bit annoyed by these. And I don't want to say that and have people ask to modify them because they're perfectly fine if you're just messing around at home. But I find that I knock them out of tune slightly, but I am used to kind of premium electric guitars. The strings are basically standard electric guitar strings. I'm going to show you it as if it's my way around. So for the 10, you would have a um, the A string, for a 13, you would have the E string, a 17, or in my case, I've gone for something thicker and wound for the G string. And then you would have, I believe it's a 26 for the G. And I've gone for heavier strings because I've noticed that a set of 11s gives me much more of a kind of guitar feel to the instrument. I'm not pulling it out of tune with my fingers as much. And that's the thing that I think people get confused about with this they pick it up and they think this is going to sound this is going to play exactly like my ukulele but because it go you're going from nylon strings to steel there's a lot more resistance your fingers are going to hurt at first but once you get used to it it's a really pleasing instrument uh, i love the block inlays as well on the rosewood fingerboard um they've gone for the cream surrounds on the humbuckers they could have gone for black and it would have looked very rock but but i like that it's got a bit more of a kind of soulfulness to it one thing I will comment on, you know, having talked about the cosmetics at the beginning, this particular one, the, the Pioneers and the Vanguards, have, they've stepped up in quality from the earlier Centurion and Pathfinder deliveries we had. You know, cosmetically, we were doing a lot of work on them to make them the best they could be at, at SUS. Um, we're not really having to do nearly as much of that with the Pioneer and the Vanguard. They work, they, they just, you get them out of the box and occasionally you might see that it's a bit like there's some slight scratches under the finish or some surface scratches and you're like well that'll buff out or you polish it out and you think well you know this instrument is 299 competing with something that's 600 pounds so you know you are going to have to just accept some of these things and it can be a bit difficult you know as a as someone working in a shop kind of trying to explain to people that they probably need to just have slightly lower expectations but but you know, if you do have those lower expectations for the cosmetic finish, they, this is a perfectly serviceable professional level instrument. I, if I was to go out and play this now at a gig, I, I would play the whole gig with it. I wouldn't feel like I was missing out against uh, you know higher end electric guitars. Okay, one thing everybody's gonna ask me about in the comments section is amplifiers. And I can answer that quite quickly. If you're buying an electric ukulele, assume that you should buy an electric guitar amp. It doesn't need to be an expensive one. Cheap, affordable electric guitar amps are 10 a penny. They, it's a massive market, much bigger than the ukulele market. And really, as long as you go for a reputable brand, you can't 
put a foot wrong. Just don't buy something secondhand from cash converters or something like that because AMP technology has come on so much in the last 10 years that something that was £80 10 years ago compared to something that's £80 now, it, and they, they're not in the same league at all. Um, if you really want to go all out, buy a small valve combo. That's what I do my demos with. And when I'm playing electric guitar and this ukulele, that's what I'm going to plug into. They, a, a valve amp has a natural warmth to it, although you do pay more for a valve amp and they are more unreliable if you're carting the amp around uh, from place to place. But if you're somebody who likes high quality audio, that's the, the step I've taken. I'm not a valve snob though. There's so many good solid state amps out there that, that, design, that are designed for magnetic pickups like the pickups you're finding on the Pioneer and they're all gonna sound great. Just to avoid those singer-songwriter aimed acoustic guitar amps that really already struggle to recreate the sound of a ukulele, never mind one with magnetic pickups. Um, the controls are another plus. The Centurion and the Pioneer both have uh, Gibson style wiring so you've got two volume controls and two tone controls with a three-way selector switch. So you've got the neck pickup, both working out of phase, and then you've got the bridge pickup uh, with the volumes and the tones. The Strat style ones have less control, but they're, they're perfectly good. The quality of the pots has really impressed me. I've got electric guitars that are a thousand pound where the pots feel really loose and quite cheap by comparison. The controls on these feel like high quality, um, you know, like like a high quality uh, stereo you know they're really smooth and in fact that's the reason I decided to take one of these home um, because if you if you're me and you've got to lean over it when you play it it's almost impossible for me to move the controls with my arm they just don't they don't move easily you have to work them but they're smooth as butter when you do so yeah well done flight if I'm gonna give this instrument a review I, I would on, I'd give it an honest 9 out of 10 there's really not much to be left to the imagination here. If you want to play uh, electric guitar music on the ukulele, this is the perfect tool for that. If you want to spice up your existing repertoire, like me, you play a bit of John Mayer and you want to try and play it on the uh, ukulele, this is a perfectly serviceable, good instrument for that. And although I probably wouldn't have picked the Pioneer for myself if I'd been able to choose all left-handed instruments, I'm glad that this is the one I picked up because I think everybody's going to be looking at the Vanguard, which is also cool, or the Pathfinder, which is also cool. Um, but there's something simple and effective about this, uh, this Pioneer. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give it another play for you now, and uh, hopefully I spur at least one of you to go out there and buy one.
Someone accused me of never playing with any kind of distortion, so I just want to do 10 seconds of it to prove that I can. <laughs> there have it folks thank you for watching this video if you want to support what i do there's a paypal tip jar link in the description or you can check out my patreon i'm i try and make a video on average once a month and but i would appreciate your support even if it's just for one month a couple of pounds here or there it all goes back towards the channel buying things like this um so no harm done if you're a regular viewer um, if you enjoy how I play, there is a fingerstyle ukulele course and a baritone ukulele course on my website, ukeswith.com. Um, I will be back very, very soon. Thanks for checking out Ukes with Alex.